You can hold that. Youngins are really starting to get on my damn nerves. He's a purveyor of nonsense. Oh, He's a Georgia high school coaching job influencer. His favorite Bible verse is Jesus wept. He's the man of constant sorrow, Chris Bam. Welcome to Sun Coaches Podcast. We're at the Nike Coach of the Year Clinic in Washington, D.C., and today I'm talking to Coach Keith Willis, a Virginia Tech standout, played in the league. He is now the owner, operator, director of operations, president, supreme commander of 360 <laughs> Recruiting. Coach, good to have you on. Man, pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Honored. It never gets old to share the room with good people, man, and honored to be sharing this mic with you today. We met yesterday, and yeah. uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Keith Willis was a two-sport college athlete at Virginia Tech. Absolutely. Tell us about that. Man, this and that, like, you know, when you're going through it, you're like, oh, anybody could do this. But as you get older now, you're like, yo, that was pretty special. You know, um, when I came out of high school, I'm from Norfolk, Virginia, and went to Norview High School and down the 757 Tidewater area. And, um, you know, I played, I played basketball my entire life. You know, that was just my thing. Parents, you know, pro, bath, pro athletes and uh, football came on later. So I was like, oh, I can play both these sports and I can do it at a high level. So, you know, I'm all everything in both sports. And I was like, well, why not go to college and play both? Like, very few people did it. And um, Your mama made you start playing football, you said. Yeah, my mom started making me play football because she said, Keith, you're too soft in basketball. And so she made me play football to get tougher. And she didn't know it was going to stick, though. So <laughs> next thing you know, I got tougher in basketball, great in football. And next thing you know, I was getting recruited, a bunch, of, a bunch of offers in both sports. And I was too young to make a decision, so I did both. And you ended up playing at Virginia Tech. Yep, ended up going to Virginia Tech. Uh, my last five schools were UVA, Virginia Tech, Georgia, Kentucky, and Michigan. I was trying to decide. That's how I took my official visits back then because I only got five back in the day. And, um, yeah, I decided to commit to Michigan originally. And then the last second, I switched to go to Virginia Tech, and it's all she wrote for that, all she wrote after that. And you were a freshman there in '99, yep. 2000. Yeah, '99. Yep, it's the first year. That's when we went to the uh, national championship and lost to Florida State. And then y'all really, I mean, your years there, y'all were really, really good. Oh yeah, we were top ten, top fifteen every year when we were there. We won a bunch of games. You know, we had a guy named Vic at quarterback. And he that, wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't bad. Too bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> then we had. Um, uh, uh, Brian Randall came in a little bit later, and Marcus and Grant Knowles. We had some really good players, and we put out draft picks every year. So it was expectation of us to at least win nine to ten games a year. And um, yeah, we were darn good actually. Some great athletes on the field. I'll tell you that. Practice was extremely competitive. Put it that way. So, which did you enjoy more, basketball or football? In at the college, in, when you were in college. In college, football. Well, let's say this. Which one? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. But which practice? Which did you like better, basketball practice or football practice? Probably basketball was my natural love because I grew up playing. It's a natural love. Football I had to work at. Basketball I had to work at to be good. Football came more natural for me. But practice wise, like nothing, nothing like hooping. It's right. nothing like hooping. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it wasn't really like practice to you. It yeah, it's just like this is what we do. Football. You know, we was, like, really good at football, so I had to take it really serious. And I actually, even though it came natural, I had, there was so much I had to learn because I was a late bloomer in football. So I had to learn, like, proper steps, proper technique and everything. So I had to really focus and practice in football. You know what well, I mean? Share the story of your first catch. Uh, first catch in, in high school when you were a ninth grader. Oh, yeah. So, I was, so apparently I'm supposed to be out there getting tough for him. I was, I, my goal was... I never forget the uh, before the first game. They're like, "What position you want to play?" And I'm like, "Let me try quarterback." They're like, "Nah, try tight end." And you're what six six? And I'm like six six, 180 pounds, maybe 180 pounds. They're like, "Try tight end." You got some good hands. And my first catch, they split me out, and they were like, they literally drew in the dirt, run this route, which was a slant route. <laughs> I was like, "All right, so take two, three steps, and then cut in." Yes. So I see a what well, I didn't know. I see a guy back there, which is a safety, right? So. I go and catch the ball full speed, and this guy's coming to hit me. But I was so scared, I didn't know I didn't could make no moves. I just knew to catch it and don't get and don't, and, um, don't fumble it. I just ran the guy completely over and went and scored a touchdown, but it didn't hurt. 
So I was like, I think I could do this. <laughs> yeah, after that, I was like, I ran him over, scored a touchdown. My like, bear by went crazy. I said, this must be a good thing I just did. Let's see if we can do it again. <laughs> ben, I'm in. I'm all in. Now. First catch ever. I was like, I think I could do this. The contact didn't hurt. Oh, I'm good now. Mentally, it was a breakthrough for me. So you show up at Virginia Tech. You told me you were 6'6", 200. Yeah. And they immediately started packing that weight on you. Yeah, yeah. Like, so when I got there, it's funny. I'm going to see guys now. They come out ready-made. I was not ready-made. I was 6'6", 200. Eight when I rate weighed in, and um, I was tough. I was athletic. I was physical, but two hundred eight and two hundred going to get two hundred sixty pounds the end just didn't match up. Um, so I, I happily, I was like, I was first team. I was all American, first team all American coming in, but I happily took my red shirt because I knew physically I was not ready to block a power play <laughs> or a zone replay. And um, so my first year, I put about thirty, probably like 33, 32 pounds on. My very first year, so I just lived in the weight room. I ate a lot and took a lot of uh, protein supplements. So uh, ate right, yeah, ate oh, properly. Ate, abso- yeah, absolutely. We stayed in Dinah Hall, you know, at that type of school, Virginia Tech. They're gonna make sure you eat three solid good meals a day, plus all the snacks in between. And yeah, we packed that weight on. It was good weight, all really good weight. It wasn't bad weight. It was really good weight. And then my second year, I put another ten pounds on. So by the time I stepped on the field, I was two hundred forty pounds. So you come out and you who did you get drafted by or who did you Green Bay? So you yeah, came out uh, 2004 draft. Came Green Bay was my first team. Um, went free agent to the Green Bay, and then Cleveland, Seattle, Denver briefly. Went to NFL Europe. Played with Frankfurt Galaxy in 2000. I think it was 2006. We won the World Bowl championship over there. That was my best football experience by far. And then came back and finished my career with um, Seattle, and Kansas City. And uh, play with some amazing athletes, great guys. I mean, great like, stories for days, man. It was been good. it was a good times. We talked yesterday. Um, you, you run. Well, I will get. I'll get back to that. Mm-hmm. What, what, t- tell us about what you do now. Like, what's the your three sixty recruiting? Yeah, man. Services. This is purpose work. You know, this is what God's called me to do. Uh, you know, for a long time after football, you're trying to figure out what what's your thing, what's your niche, and it's one thing to work a job, one thing to uh, do something that makes you money, but it's one thing to really make your heart smile every single day you get up. And I, one thing I've I've done it for a while, got away from it, but one thing I, I can't just ignore is how I feel helping kids get scholarships. So very fortunate to start Elite 360 uh, with my partner, Jamie Elliott, a good friend of mine I grew up with and played against. And basically we educate families on the high school recruiting process. And one the the biggest need we found when it came to recruiting, because we, we know our own stories, I wish I had somebody like me that helped me learn how to choose a school properly, what fit my best skill set. Virginia Tech was an amazing experience. I love Virginia Tech. I wouldn't trade it for the world. But if I would know what I know now, I would probably went to Michigan or Georgia because my skill set fit the offense a lot better. Right, right, right. right. And so um, I wish somebody could help me with that. And then my partner, Jamie, was under-recruited, didn't have the exposure, but it was a great athlete. He ended up going to a smaller school at the time, Delaware, became a school all-time lead receiver, Hall of Fame, and still got drafted. So we have two different recruiting processes. And we was like, look, how can we put this together, help the kids? And we started the 360 Recruiting. And we like said, we just, uh, we're a membership-based program where we educate families on the high school recruiting process. And we also get kids exposure on the back end to help them get exposure when it comes to the college coaches. So we are a great resource for college coaches to let them find the the diamonds and the roughs all around the country. But at the same time, we're, we're helping kids just get the exposure. Because a lot of times kids is like, parents just want to make sure their child is seen and then get a fair evaluation. You can't control if you get the scholarship offer or not. So I tell people, if, you, if they, somebody guarantees you the scholarship offer, they're lying. But, they, but we guarantee exposure. Right. We'll get your kids seen and evaluate and get your feedback. And that's what our services, our, our platform is able to do because we have real relationships. Because think about it. Between my partner and I, we literally played over 20 years of football. So guys we played against, played for, or played with, majority went into college coaching. And so we leveraged our relationships and continued to build on that each and every year and gave them and gave them real information, and we did our business with integrity, and next thing you know, it blew up. And now we can use our resources and our relationships to help all these children come behind us right. to have a great experience when it comes to the recruiting process. Well, you two are probably the smartest ones in the room because you decided not to go into coaching yeah. and, and went this route. I yeah. mean, of all your guys and all your buddies and everything that went the coaching route, you guys found a better way to do it. 
And um, I mean, I know you run camps. Yeah. I mean, talk to talk about how your camps work, and give us just some stories about the, you know the recruiting process yeah. and things you've come across that things that are, give it, you know some good stories and some yeah. things that you, you give people some hey don't, you don't do this and, yeah and maybe some man stories. it's a lot so the one thing I'll say when it comes to the uh, camps you know you see camps all over the place and and sadly say majority camps are just huge money makers for that person throwing the camp right it's not a lot of substance behind the camp. And so one thing that we do is like when we tell kids about camps or we host a camp, we're like, what's your what's the end result? The end result is to get an opportunity to go to school paid for. So when we have camps, we actually have college coaches who can make decisions at the camps. The stars and stuff is all cool and it's cute and everything, but at the end of the day, a coach doesn't care about where the stars can he play and can he make a play on third and fourth down for me to help me win a game. And so if I can have those coaches at a camp and get these kids in front of the coaches to get reevaluation. That's the type of camps we want, and that's what we run. So when kids come to our camp, you know you're going to learn, you're going to have a great experience, you're going to learn ball, and you're going to be seen by the schools you desire to, and we're going to send your results out to every a school who's not there. So that's the type of camps we run, and people are very happy. They're, they they get more than their money's worth. We never have an issue talking about how much a camp costs because the parents are like, I ought to pay twice as much for that, for that type of experience, you know, and that's all about giving value. So, But when it comes to the recruiting process, man, let me tell you, there's a lot of great stories, a lot of horror stories. And the one thing I'll tell you about when it comes to, like, um, some not – what not to do <laughs> when it comes to this recruiting game, I always say this. is Like, from a parent's standpoint, understand they're, you're being recruited too. And I don't think parents realize that because if they, when the coaches are recruiting your son, they're studying the families. What type of kid am I getting? You know, what's he made of, Right. But if they got an obnoxious mother, an obnoxious father, the coach thinking, like, are you going to be knocking on my door two years from now if your kid's not playing? You know, or can I can I handle you? Are you going to be trying to tear my program apart because your kid's not getting enough balls or make, you know, not getting enough tackles on the field? Are you going to be on social media trying to talk bad about us and tell our kill our recruiting process? If they feel like they can't deal with the parents, they can find just 1,500 of your kids all around the country. They'll go find another one. I promise your kids at the end all be all. Parents, regardless how much how well you think about your kids, there's 500 more of them out there, okay? And um, I've seen kids lose scholarship opportunities because of that. Well, you told me the other day, yesterday, about um, the reclassification process, Kill. Oh, man, this is crazy. So we have a kid um, a couple years ago, and he decides, you know, He's a big time. He was a big time player at the time, sitting over twenty plus offers, you know. And um, he decides to look around the internet and was like, him and his family is like, uh, I believe that you know we're good enough to reclassify. It's time for us to go to college. So that the, their coaches and his camp decides they want to reclassify a year up. Well, what they don't realize is that the coach, the school's recruiting you are planning you to come out for this particular year. When you go up, you just limited your opportunities because these, these schools are already recruiting guys in your position or have a certain number of guys they can go get. And now you're putting yourself in that class. It went from 20-plus scholarship offers to less than five. And now coaches who were coming to visit you to plan to recruit you for next year are now out. They can't come to your house now because they don't have – they've already been to a certain amount of homes. They only got a certain amount of homes they can go to in a certain amount of time period, and they can't fit you in that schedule now. So now you're not a recruitable guy for them. I'm not saying you're not good enough, but you're not a recruitable guy. So now you just limited all your opportunities. On top of that, the kid was like, yeah, I don't see any guys I go against who's good enough to go against me, basically. Who do you think you are? You can only see a certain amount of kids. On any given Sunday or any given Friday night, you could get, you get your butt handed to you. So he decides to do that, and next thing you know, he's trying to choose between two schools and and – because he wants to wait to have this big hoopla recruiting day, and he wants to leave high school early. And next thing you know, it's just like he, he was fortunate to find a place to go, but that could have ended very badly for what him. What was your advice to the mother when she said, we're down to two? <laughs> commit now. Like, <laughs> like, don't play with this. Commit now. Because uh, this is going to be – it will be embarrassing come signing day, and that school finds a kid out the portal – because the coach that's leaves. The thing now. Yeah, oh, the portal just changed the whole game. And if you have nowhere to go to school, now that you're going to tell everybody, oh, yeah, we're for 20 scholarship offers plus to we got to find a home somewhere and we can't reclassify back down. It's going to look crazy. So, but yeah, transfer portal changed the entire game. Like, well, let me ask you this. I'm curious about this because yeah. I have a, I'm sure a lot of people do, that, and I'm like everybody else, ignorant, 
not real smart, but look at it, and this is what I think when I tell kids, you know, because I'm a high school coach, and I, I have to tell them something. To me, it th- seems like the portal probably drops you down a level. If, if you were this guy, you're probably now down a level, at least, because the portal has changed the game to where if you were a G5 guy, you might now want to look at – you you might be an F, FCS guy. You might be a D2. You know what I'm saying? It, it might have dropped you down – a level is that I mean you is that could that be accurate absolutely I, I tell everybody uh D2 is a new D1 now <laughs> you know what I mean because I'm gonna give you a very real story I'm not gonna use a particular school's name but I was just like two weeks ago I was meeting with a school and um they took 35 kids in and this is a power five school out of the 35 kids 25 was out the portal so out of those 10 kids, I asked the coach, how many people, how many films did you evaluate out of these 10 kids? He said over 2,500. So you're telling me out of tw- over 2,500 kids, that was for 10 spots. That's so, like 1%. Yes, it's, it's crazy. So I tell families, it's not if your son's good enough or not, the numbers just may not be in your favor. And you got to see, and a lot of colleges still recruit high school kids, but it may be... Every other year, that will take 80% high school kids and 20% portal guys, or it may 80% portal and 20% high school guys. And so um, the portal changed everything, and also it's just like it bumps your kid down. So he may be a power five guy. The numbers aren't his favorite. Now he's an FCS kid. And so that's why I see so many FCS programs upsetting power five programs on, on game day now because they got dudes, l- l- they got dudes <laughs> at the FCS level. Yeah. Now you're seeing what's happening is even Division two. if you watch Division two football right now, the talent in a product is 10 times better than it was five years ago because a lot of these guys are going down and they got some, and now guys at the D2 and D3 NAIA, NAIA level have something to play for because they're trying to get to the top. Right. So now they're putting out better film because they're incentivized where if they play well enough, they get an undisclosed amount of money to hop into the portal to give yourself a chance to go up to FCS or FBS level to go play the dream ball. Right. So it's a lot of, I say bad that comes with the portal, but a lot of good for guys trying to work themselves up too. So change the portal changed everything. I tell everybody, you have to humble yourself now. The market's going to tell you exactly where you are. If you have committable offers, this is not the time to wait for a big shindig. Take the school. Forget trying to get 30, 40 offers. Find the school you like. Commit. Lock yourself in and go play ball. Well, tell me about this with Elite 360. I'm sure you guys have, you know, part of your program is educational where you explain the difference between an offer Mm. and a committable offer. Yes. Because I can't tell you how much as a high school coach, it's hard to explain them to the sweet, sweet babies. (laughs) All right, you, you got an offer. It's kind of like when we were in school and you get that letter from the school. Yeah, it's uh, just like yeah, a letter. And you thought it was, yeah. you, you like, oh, look, I got a letter from LSU. Is, is, is it handwritten or is it typed up? Yeah. Is it handwritten? <laughs> okay, that's a real one. Yeah, it's got the stamp on there. You yeah. put it up in your room. I got a letter from LSU. And, yeah. and it's the same. I mean, So there's 20,000 other people. I mean, I'm sure you guys spend time explaining the difference yeah. between a committable offer and an offer. Yeah, absolutely. So I tell a lot of kids, right, a lot of times schools will offer you blindly just to say they can say, oh, yeah, we're interested in you, but you gotta, it's not committable because you have to come to camp and prove that you're that guy we think you are. Or two, you're an insurance plan. They may have their eye on three other guys, but those, those three guys got 20 other offers too. In case these three guys don't come to us, we can always say, well, we've been, we offered you six months ago. We've been recruiting you. So those are like not committable offers. But then you got committable offers where – most committable offers come from like in-state schools. So let's just say, let's let's just for example, I'm from Virginia. Just say Virginia Tech, right? Most of the time, they offer a guy in-state. It's probably a committable offer because you can't afford to offer a kid, snatch it back at the last second, and expect to go back to that high school or that area and recruit again. So you got to take care of your in-state guys. And that's another, I'm just using Virginia Tech as an example. Right, right. But that's across the country, right? right? But if I'm Again, this example, they don't do this. I'm just using that as an example. Say I'm UVA, Virginia, right? And I, rec- I offer a kid in Texas that's a running back. I know I'm competing with Texas, Texas Tech, and Texas a and Baylor, all these schools. It's a good chance he won't come, but I'm going to throw an offer at him just in case he's interested and see if I can get him on campus. And at the last second, if I decide to take somebody else and not him, 
I don't have to go back to Texas to recruit. Yeah, right. So I'm good. Yeah, Texas far away. Exactly. So I we're see them people. Yeah, we're not going to lose no. We're not going to lose no. No. We're not going to get a lot. That of, relationship's not complete. We're fine. Yeah. Right. So I tell everybody, make sure you have a committable offer. One thing you can ask a coach right away is when a, a, a coach offers you, it's like, Coach, if I commit today, am I good? And you'll find out really quickly. I know some college coaches are like, Oh my gosh, don't say that to them. But I tell our our, our kids, like, ask them if you commit today, are we good? Can I sign on the very next time period? I know we're the, and we're, we're locked in. Or coach, is this an offer where I have to come to camp? Do I have to come on campus? Like figure out where you. What does that offer mean? And a lot of times, kids get so excited they want to post social media. I said, just ask, what does this offer mean, coach? And coaches, a lot of times they respect that because I mean. There's you're, some, you're fixing to enter into a business relationship. Absolutely. So you need to start learning how to conduct it, business. Absolutely. You got to be able to learn how to communicate. And if, for all the kids listening to this, there's nothing wrong with asking these questions. It's nothing wrong with And coaches are acting, they respect it. And a lot of coaches who are good men, not just good coaches, they're going to tell you the truth. Hey, this offer is good as long as you come to camp. This offer actually it's good. You can commit now, we'll take you. You know, they'll tell you straight up for the most part. You know, there's some bad apples in a bunch, but I tell everybody, find out if it's a committable offer. Find out if it's an offer that you have to go prove yourself on. And also, the last thing I tell, I tell kids is, ask the coach, if I get hurt after I commit, is my offer still good? Is my scholarship still good? If I get hurt my junior year, senior year, whatever, well, are you still going to honor my scholarship? That's huge. Yeah, and people don't think about those type of questions. That's what we educate our families on who work with us. It's like, and we'll ask coaches that question because I tell everybody, and it's not for all college coaches, they can kind of BS with parents because guess what? They recruit your kid one time, and they ain't got to talk to you ever again. But it can't BS guys like us because, one, we have real relationships with them. But, two, you can't lie to us about a kid because we got access to thousands of kids. Right. You can't come back to us if you lie to us because now I'm going to think you do it to the rest of the kids, and that's our integrity and our reputation, reputation online as well. So I tell coaches, like, just be real, be honest, and, you know, everything should be good to go. But make sure parents and kids that you ask the right type of questions. Well, that's awesome that, you know, Elite 360 is doing that kind of service for these parents and families and camps. I know we talked yesterday that a lot of these – Big camp, you know, big services and stuff that rate the five, four, three stars or whatever, and you know they'll advertise. I mean, you were sharing with me the 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 financials behind it, where they'll they'll advertise that yeah, the camp's only a hundred dollars, but you're bringing these kids in from Virginia to California. But once you figure in the airfare and the hotel and everything else, this kid's paying two grand to go get rated. Absolutely. And the kid that doesn't have it, what does that kid do? Yeah, it's tough, man. Where we, we again, we study the market. We recognize that where you, uh, you, the people hosting the camp looks at the price on the flyer, but the people coming to camp looks at the price on the flyer, the airfare, the the gas, the hotels, the food, and whatever else a kid needs to be successful at that camp. And a lot of times, by the time you add that up, a lot of families don't have it. So one thing that we take it personal is that can we go to that kid's community and put a camp there? Or can we get enough college coaches to go to drive traffic down there? Right. Saying like, "Hey, coach, you got seven or eight dudes in in the in the you know in the boondocks in Georgia or Florida or Virginia or Texas. Go out to these high schools that you normally wouldn't go to, and go take a look at these kids. And here's their film. Now, coaches are we're driving traffic that way. So our thing is we we're really in it for the kids because. A lot of people in our position give us a bad rap because they're like they're called handlers or recruiting services, and they're just out here to make money. But what I tell people all the time is this: like street agents, exactly the street agents, right? But it's like how many like for us, we always say how much value can we add? And the thing is, we don't gotta live through the kids. Jamie Elliott, and myself, my partner and I, we literally made it to the top. We don't have like we gave it all we had. There's no regrets in our careers. So <laughs> guess what? I don't. I don't have to live through you to make it. We did it. So now it's 100% about you. Like, our win is seeing you go to school and not transfer out three a year later. Get that degree. Yeah, get a degree and staying where you committed to. That's a win for us. You know what I mean? And so um, it's just tough because um, the other part of it is when these people have camps and these kids come to the camps, it's not a great experience. Their parents feel like, oh, there's 600 kids here and it's a money grab. Or there's not, my kid didn't learn anything at the camp. Well, we control our numbers and how many kids we actually bring in. 
and we'll tell parents straight up, this camp is for you or this camp's not for you. You need to go to a different camp, but here's a camp, a camp your, your son should go to. We're very honest with parents because, like, we don't, yes, we're a business, we make money, but at the same time is that we're very successful with outside of this business, right. you know? And so it's, um, we just want to do it the right way with integrity and make sure. I was sure. about to say, being honest and, and, and doing that, cause you're still helping them. Yeah. This might not be for you, but I'll tell you what, we're going to help you out. Yes. Check this out over here. Absolutely. And we're, we're big on that. Our biggest thing is providing so much. I say, well, I don't care if I charge you $1 or I charge you $10,000. By the time you finish working with us, you're going to say, I wish I, I could, I would have paid more for that because it's about providing value. And where was, where did you do your last camp at? The so, most recent one you did. So uh, the most recent one we did was in Maryland at a local high school, but the big and one. I know you got one coming up. Yeah, that's going to be a big one. That's going to be at Catholic University, and uh, we're very fortunate to partner with Catholic University. But it's it's uh, Coach Cuts Coach Cuts Mega Camp, and we'll have about twenty twenty five schools there, probably a lot more, a couple hundred kids, and literally we just we're just going to help get kids get get um, get to that camp, right? Because we believe in what Catholic University is about. It's a win-win for both people. Like we could get kids on a campus. He could recruit kids. He can these kids who can't afford to go to these bigger camps or places. The problem we was talking about. We're bringing the schools to them so they get true evaluation. And um, we have the resources. We have the kids, and we have the, the network to make it happen. And we're just very we're very fortunate to make sure um, to help Catholic out to make sure they have the, enough kids on the campus to when is that do gonna it. Be? That's gonna be May thirtieth. May thirtieth this year. It's gonna be at Catholic in, in DC and. We're excited because it's going to be great competition, great you know, coaches. Are going to be, all the uh, college coaches will be actually teaching the drills. And, um, and, we're, and you'll see all these kids getting a shot to truly be evaluated. And they're just not, they're not just another number in camp. Because what's going to happen is that you have all these schools at these camp evaluating these kids. And it's like, all right, if I'm South Florida, right, we never would have came up to maybe Maryland, D.C., but we saw four kids that we like a lot. Well, we're going to invite these four kids down to Tampa, Florida to come on our campus to compete down here in the far ahead coach to meet them. Now, guess what? We open a pipeline to D.C. They go down there. We tell them, you got to go play well so the kids behind you have a chance to come out too. And that's what it's really about. So these coaches, we, it's economic. The coaches who don't have the big budgets to go recruit, they come there and see a bunch of dudes at that camp. The kids won't have the money to go out to the coaches. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a win-win and we're just very fortunate to be a small part of it. Man, that's awesome. It's been real enlightening listening to, I mean, the last two days just hitting it off and talking to you guys and, and hearing. I know Jamie talked about it when he coached at Buford, and, you know, that's, that's yeah. my home state, and knowing just what you guys have given back. Because, I mean, so many of us, or so many of you guys, you end up coaching. Yeah. Or you, you ride off into the sunset, and then no one – you know, looking back at what you had to do. And, I mean, one of the things that I respect so much about your story, too, was you, you had your – you got your degree. You redshirted, which, and you finished – and you, you finished school at Virginia yeah. Tech. So that if it didn't work out in the league, you, you have things to fall back on. Absolutely. I always said this where, you know, I, I listen to kids' commitments now. When they commit to college, they say, oh, yeah, for the next three years, I'll be attending this university. And that already tells me your mindset is not where it needs to be. Not saying you're not good enough to leave in three years, but you're basically saying, like, I'm coming here, play ball and get out, and I'm going to roll my dice and trying to make it to the NFL, and that's it. And they're not even looking at the, just the numbers. Like, the numbers are against you. Yeah, everybody's not going to <laughs> Yeah, the numbers are against you. <laughs> and so I was very fortunate where I had the mindset where I knew I had the size, I knew I had everything, and I had a great chance to make it to the NFL, and I did. But also, thank God for my mom and dad being at home, is that, I knew going to school was like, why they're paying for it, get as much education as you possibly can. So I was a guy, I was there. I spent every summer at Virginia Tech, took extra classes. I loaded my schedule up, graduated on time, and I got my master's while, while they were paying for it. So, yes. They're using you, use them. Absolutely. They used me. They made a lot of money off of me. There was no NIL back then. <laughs> yeah. There was none of that. So my way I could get that, let me get both my degrees while I'm here. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And, I still, and I still had a great experience. I still joined the fraternity, had a great time. I still, um, I still like, you know, dated. I still, I still played basketball. I still played ball. I, mean, I did everything I wanted to do. I had a great college life. But I walked out with both degrees too, though. And that went a long way. By the time I was 23 years old, I was way ahead of the curve. People who went to school strictly for school didn't do what we did. But I took every, I mean, I took advantage of the situation. I tell everybody, understand, keep the main thing, the main thing. Football, 
for most people, it is the main thing. But also, guess what? Majority of you, even if you make it to the NFL, you're not going to make it past three years. You look at the, all your, your heroes, the people, oh, 8, 10, 12-year careers, that's an anomaly. But the people like the average person, if you make it, you're lucky to get three years, you're lucky to get in the pension, you may get that degree. Or I would say now time to change or get a skill set. So get a skill set where you can make a bunch of money with it. I don't care what the skill set is, earn a skill set. I'm big like, yes, get a degree, but you don't have to go to college to be successful. Just get a skill set that can pay you well that you can add, a lot of, add value to a lot of people. You got a website? Yes, yes, share with people? yes, definitely. Check out Elite360Recruiting.com, Elite360Recruiting.com. Social media handles, all the same, Elite360Recruiting. Personal uh, social media is Hoodie Millionaire, H-O-O-D-I-E Millionaire. So, yeah, that's, that's where you can find us at. Um, if you need help with anything when it comes to just getting information or just, like, are you in a good situation – and you just you need are you if you're a parent like I don't know what to do next I got this young son who I want to give the best opportunity to, and I don't have a bunch of money I need something very affordable but I need my son to get every opportunity. Where where, where are your fit? Where the ones for you? Well, Keith, I sure do appreciate you coming on, man. Awesome, great personality, just good person can just tell. And uh, I know we're looking forward to uh, a long relationship at these clinics, working with you guys, and just can't wait to see. How, how y'all take off and keep helping these young people. Absolutely. I got to say, man, this clinic is top notch. All high school coach out there listening to this, I don't care what city you in, next year in February, March, get to the closest Nike clinic you possibly can. You would not be disappointed. The teaching, the coaches are amazing. The network is amazing. And, um, and support. You know, a lot of times people want support, but they never support others. So we'll do that. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. For sure.